In the tumultuous year of 1793, during the height of the French Revolution, the city of Toulon became the focal point of an extraordinary event that would mark the beginning of one of history's most remarkable military careers. The city, taken over by French royalists and supported by a coalition of British, Spanish and Sardinian forces, stood in defiance of the revolutionary government. The siege of Toulon was not just a military confrontation, it was a trial in which the destiny of France and of a young artillery officer named Napoleon Bonaparte would be irrevocably shaped. Before the siege of Toulon, before the rise of Napoleon, France stood on the brink of monumental change. The late 18th century was a period of profound turmoil, marked by deep-seated inequalities and an untenable social order. The Ancien Regime's foundations were crumbling under the weight of financial bankruptcy, worsened by France's involvement in costly overseas wars and the extravagant spending of its monarchy. The common people, burdened by taxes and facing severe food shortages, grew increasingly disillusioned with the privileged estates who lived in opulence, untouched by the nation's suffering. Amidst this social ferment, the ideas of the Enlightenment began to take root, challenging centuries-old traditions of monarchy and social hierarchy. Philosophers like Jean-Jacques Rousseau, François-Marie Arouet and Charles-Louis de Seconda were advocates of the principles of liberty, equality and fraternity. These principles inspired the Third Estate, which represented the common people of France, to aspire for a fair and equitable society. In 1789, King Louis XVI convened the Estates General, a general assembly representing the French Estates of the realm, in an attempt to solve the financial crisis that France was facing. However, this move inadvertently sparked revolutionary sentiments. The Third Estate, representing the common people, found its voice, demanding an end to the inequality that had defined French society for generations. This demand for reform marked the beginning of the French Revolution, setting the stage for the abolition of the monarchy, the establishment of the Republic, and the turbulent years that would forever alter the course of French history. In September 1793, Amidst revolutionary enthusiasm, Napoleon Bonaparte, a 24-year-old Corsican artillery officer, made his mark during the Siege of Toulon. This event, a critical point in the Revolutionary Wars, saw Toulon held by French royalists and British allies, challenging the revolutionary government. Napoleon's strategic acumen and leadership at this siege propelled him from obscurity, showcasing his military prowess and heralding his rise on the global stage. Assigned as an artillery officer, Napoleon's strategic brilliance quickly became apparent. He advocated for the capture of key fortifications, a move that would allow the revolutionary forces to dominate the harbour and the city. His successful execution of this strategy led to the recapture of Toulon, showcasing his military prowess and earning him rapid promotion. This victory was not just a triumph over the royalists and their allies, it was the world's first glimpse of Napoleon's ability to change the course of battles and, indeed, history. This move would allow the revolutionary forces to target the British fleet directly, a bold strategy that had not been considered by his superiors. With relentless determination, Napoleon organized the artillery batteries, turning the tide of the siege in favor of the revolutionaries. His innovative tactics and leadership on the battlefield not only inflicted heavy damage on the enemy forces, but also marked the emergence of a military genius who would later shape the fate of Europe. By December 1793, the siege of Toulon reached its climax. Under Napoleon's leadership, the revolutionary forces executed a daring assault on the strategic forts defending the harbour. Among these, Fort Le Guillette, a key defensive position, became a focal point. Its capture by the revolutionaries was crucial, enabling them to aim their cannons at the British ships in the harbour and pose a significant threat of destruction. The British, recognizing the indefensible position, ordered a withdrawal. On the 19th of December, the revolutionary forces successfully reclaimed Toulon, marking a significant victory for the Republic and showcasing Napoleon's emerging military genius. The siege's success at Toulon was significantly due to the daring strategies of a young Napoleon Bonaparte. His decisive role in the victory earned him a promotion to Brigadier General marking the onset of his rapid ascent in the French military. This event was more than a mere military triumph. It heralded the rise of Napoleon's legacy, showcasing his strategic brilliance that would later dominate Europe. Following the siege, Napoleon didn't just emerge as a skilled military strategist. 
he became a pivotal figure destined to influence the course of French and European history. This promotion at merely 24 years old was merely the start of his illustrious career. Napoleon's success at Toulon had caught the eye of the revolutionary leaders, paving the way for his rapid ascent in the military hierarchy. It was here that his talents for leadership, strategy and innovation were first recognized on a stage that mattered. The siege also had profound implications for France. It quelled a significant royalist threat and demonstrated the revolutionary government's resolve to defend the Republic against internal and external enemies. The victory at Toulon was a morale booster for the revolutionary forces, showcasing that with strategic insight and determination, they could overcome seemingly insurmountable odds. It also served as a critical learning experience for Napoleon and was a proving ground for his military strategies, many of which he would refine and employ in his future campaigns across Europe. The principles of rapid mobility, the importance of artillery, and the value of decisive action that were evident at Toulon became hallmarks of Napoleonic warfare. In the broader canvas of history, the siege of Toulon marks the emergence of one of the most influential figures in modern history. It was a chapter that foretold the rise of an empire under Napoleon, who would go on to challenge the old order of Europe, redraw boundaries, and instigate legal and social reforms that resonate to this day. After the siege of Toulon, as Napoleon Bonaparte's star began its meteoric rise, another facet of his character came to the fore, his insatiable thirst for knowledge. Beyond the battlefield, Napoleon was a prolific reader, delving into history, philosophy, and the sciences. His intellectual curiosity was not merely academic. It informed his strategic thinking and his vision for France. Napoleon's comprehensive reforms in law, education and administration bore the imprint of his wide-ranging studies. The Napoleonic Code, for instance, was a monumental legal achievement that modernized French law and influenced legal systems worldwide. This aspect of Napoleon's life underscores a critical insight. His achievements were not solely the result of military genius, but also his profound understanding of the world. His ability to synthesize information from diverse fields into coherent strategic decisions was unparalleled. Napoleon's governance, characterized by efficiency and innovation, reflected his belief in meritocracy and his disdain for the old aristocratic order that had stifled progress. His keen interest in the sciences and arts led to significant patronage during his reign, contributing to a cultural renaissance. His campaigns across Europe were not just military expeditions, but also missions of cultural exploration, as he brought scholars along to study the region's history, art and science. In the aftermath of the Reign of Terror, France sought stability through a new form of governance. In 1795, the National Convention established the Directory, a five-member committee, under a new constitution designed to prevent both the concentration of power and the excesses of the previous years. This period marked a transitional phase in French history, characterized by its attempt to navigate the troubled waters between monarchy and radical republicanism. The Directory was tasked with leading a nation still reeling from the effects of revolution, war and economic turmoil. From its inception, the Directory faced significant challenges, internal divisions, royalist insurrections and widespread dissatisfaction among the populace. This fragile foundation set the stage for a period of political instability that would ultimately pave the way for a new type of leadership under Napoleon Bonaparte. The Directory, from its onset in 1795, was ensnared in a web of political and economic challenges that severely compromised its ability to govern effectively. Politically, France was a cauldron of competing interests. Royalists sought the restoration of the monarchy, Jacobin's group pushed for a return to radical republicanism, and moderates struggled to find a middle path. The Directory's efforts to navigate these turbulent waters were often seen as heavy-handed, particularly in its suppression of uprisings and dissent, further alienating large segments of the population. Economically, the situation was no less dire. The aftermath of the Revolutionary Wars had left France's finances in ruins. The government's reliance on the issuance of assignats revolutionary currency, led to rampant inflation and a deepening fiscal crisis. Food shortages and unemployment exacerbated the public's discontent, creating a fertile ground for dissatisfaction and unrest. 
The directory's attempts to stabilize the economy through reforms were largely ineffective, further eroding confidence in its leadership. In the spring of 1796, amidst growing dissatisfaction with the directory, Napoleon Bonaparte, then a young and ambitious general, was appointed to lead the French Army of Italy. At just 26 years old, his appointment came amidst skepticism from military and political circles. However, Napoleon quickly dispelled any doubts through a series of audacious maneuvers and victories against the Austrian Empire and its allies. His strategy of rapid movement and the element of surprise, coupled with his ability to motivate his troops, resulted in the capture of significant territories across Italy. The Italian peninsula, fragmented into various states and under the influence of the Austrian Empire, presented both a strategic challenge and an opportunity for France. Napoleon's primary objectives were to drive the Austrians from Italy, weaken Austria's dominance in European politics, and spread the revolutionary ideals of the French Revolution across the continent. The campaign was also seen as a means to secure the southern flank of France and to plunder the riches of Italy to finance France's ongoing wars. With these goals in mind, Napoleon embarked on what would become a legendary military campaign, showcasing his tactical brilliance and altering the course of Italian history. Beginning in April 1796, Napoleon's Italian campaign unfolded with a series of rapid, audacious maneuvers that took his adversaries by surprise. The Battle of Montenot, Napoleon's first significant victory, broke the Austrian and Sardinian lines, setting the tone for the campaigns. This victory was quickly followed by others, including the pivotal siege of Mantua, which, despite its length, proved crucial in weakening Austrian control in northern Italy. Perhaps the most emblematic of these confrontations was the Battle of Arcole in November 1796, where Napoleon, in a display of personal courage, rallied his troops by seizing a flag and leading a charge across a bridge, securing a symbolic victory that epitomized his leadership and tactical daring. Through these and other victories, Napoleon not only forced the Austrians and their allies to cede control of much of northern Italy, but also demonstrated the effectiveness of his military doctrines, which emphasized speed, mobility, and the use of artillery. These successes not only bolstered Napoleon's reputation as a military genius, but also laid the groundwork for the transformation of the Italian states under French influence. With the consolidation of French control over the Italian peninsula, Napoleon embarked on a comprehensive program of reform that sought to reshape Italian states according to the principles of the French Revolution. The establishment of sister republics, such as the Cisalpine and Ligurian republics, marked the beginning of a new political order, inspired by French administrative and legal models. Napoleon's reforms in Italy included the introduction of the Napoleonic Code, which standardized legal systems and abolished feudal rights offering a measure of equality before the law. Educational reforms aimed at creating a literate and informed citizenry capable of participating in civic life, while economic policies sought to modernize agriculture and industry. The Treaty of Campo Formio in 1797, which concluded the campaign, saw the Austrians cede control of northern Italy and the Low Countries to France. This victory not only expanded French influence, but also solidified Napoleon's reputation as a military genius and a patriot. His successes in Italy were not merely territorial conquests. They were a demonstration of revolutionary ideals in action, spreading the message of liberty and shaking the foundations of the old European order. In 1798, Napoleon Bonaparte, driven by a blend of military ambition and a thirst for knowledge, launched the Egyptian campaign. This ambitious endeavor aims to undermine British access to its Indian territories, establish a French presence in the Middle East, and embark on an unprecedented quest for scientific discovery. Leading a formidable force that included not only soldiers, but also a cohort of scientists and scholars, Napoleon embarked on what would become one of the most ambitious campaigns of his career. Napoleon's vision was grand, to conquer Egypt, and in doing so, unlock the ancient mysteries of the Nile. Accompanying his formidable army was a cadre of over 150 scientists, engineers and scholars, members of the Commission of Sciences and Arts, tasked with studying every aspect of Egyptian civilization, geography and natural history. This dual pursuit of expansion and enlightenment marked the beginning of a journey that would leave an indelible mark on both history and science. 
In the sweltering heat of July 1798, the French forces led by Napoleon engaged the Mamluk rulers of Egypt in the pivotal Battle of the Pyramids. This encounter, emblematic of the campaign's military challenges, showcased Napoleon's tactical genius. Employing the divisional square formations, the French troops withstood the ferocious cavalry charges of the Mamluks, securing a decisive victory that opened the gates of Cairo to the French army. This triumph, however, was tempered by the naval disaster at the Battle of the Nile, where Admiral Nelson's British fleet annihilated the French fleet anchored at Aboukir Bay, cutting off Napoleon's army from France and altering the strategic landscape of the campaign. Despite this setback, Napoleon pressed on with the occupation of Egypt, establishing French control and embarking on a comprehensive survey of the country's treasures and mysteries. The Battle of the Pyramids, where he famously told his troops, from the top of these pyramids, 40 centuries looked down on us, resulted in a significant victory over the Mamluks. However, the naval defeat at the Battle of the Nile by Admiral Nelson's fleet cut off Napoleon's expedition from France, highlighting the vulnerabilities of his grandiose ambitions. Despite the military setbacks, the Egyptian campaign had profound impacts on science, archaeology and the arts, initiating the field of Egyptology and bringing to Europe a fascination with Egyptian culture. The campaign demonstrated Napoleon's multifaceted legacy, a blend of military genius, imperial ambition, and a deep-seated commitment to the advancement of knowledge. With the establishment of French control in Egypt, the Commission of Sciences and Arts embarked on an unparalleled scholarly mission, dissecting every facet of Egyptian life, geography, and history. Amidst the backdrop of a land steeped in millennia of history, these scholars, numbering over 150, set about documenting Egypt's vast riches. Their work ranged from the botanical to the astronomical, from the architectural to the cultural, laying the groundwork for modern Egyptology. One of the campaign's most enduring legacies was the discovery of the Rosetta Stone in 1799, which bore inscriptions in Greek, Demotic and Hieroglyphic. This find would later become the key to deciphering Egyptian hieroglyphs, unlocking the secrets of ancient Egyptian civilization. The comprehensive documentation, study and publication of Egyptian culture, history and natural sciences in the description de l'Egypte laid the foundational stones for the field of Egyptology and significantly advanced the study of archaeology. This blending of military ambition with scholarly pursuit exemplified the Enlightenment's ideals, showcasing an insatiable quest for knowledge and understanding. The campaign's impact extended beyond the academic, influencing cultural perceptions of Egypt in the West and sparking a wave of Egyptomania that permeated the arts, literature and architecture. Napoleon, already a celebrated military leader, capitalized on political instability and economic crisis to orchestrate a coup d'etat on November 9, 1799, known as 18 Brumaire in the French Revolutionary Calendar, overthrowing France's directory. This period of unrest provided the perfect backdrop for his ascent to power. By leveraging his widespread popularity and the general dissatisfaction with the directory, Napoleon presented himself as the Republic's protector. The coup was meticulously planned, involving a combination of political maneuvering and military support. Through strategic use of force and persuasion, Napoleon swiftly dismantled the directory's governance, marking the beginning of his dominant role in French politics. By the end of the day, the legislative bodies were disbanded and the directory ceased to exist, replaced by the consulate with Napoleon as its first consul, effectively placing him at the helm of the French government. This momentous event marked a turning point in French history, as it effectively ended the decade-long experiment with revolutionary government and paved the way for Napoleon's eventual assumption of imperial power. The coup of 18 Brumaire is remembered not just for its immediate impact, but for its profound implications for the future of France and Europe. Napoleon's rise to power signified a new era of French leadership, characterized by ambitious reforms, military conquests, and the spread of revolutionary ideals across the continent. Economically, Napoleon revitalized France through a series of measures that stabilized the currency, fostered trade, and encouraged industrial development. His efforts to rebuild the infrastructure included the creation of the Banque de France, which helped to stabilize the financial system and promote economic growth. He reformed the educational system, establishing lycees, 
secondary schools aimed at training civil servants and military officers loyal to the state. This emphasis on education was part of a broader strategy to create a meritocratic society where advancement was based on ability rather than birth. Napoleon not only restored order and prosperity to France, but also prepared the nation for further expansion of its influence. His reforms laid the foundations for the empire he would soon lead, an empire that would challenge the old order of Europe and leave a lasting mark on the world. In a ceremony steeped in symbolism and splendor, Napoleon Bonaparte crowned himself Emperor of the French, marking the peak of his power. This act of self-coronation at Notre Dame Cathedral was a clear declaration of his supremacy and autonomy, distinguishing his reign from those of monarchs anointed by divine right. In the wake of the French Revolution, France found itself navigating a sea of turmoil and uncertainty. By 1804, having stabilized the nation through a series of reforms and military victories, Napoleon set his sights on a more permanent consolidation of power. His ascent to First Consul had already given him unprecedented control, but he envisioned a role that would not only secure his leadership, but also provide France with the stability and glory it sought. The decision to crown himself Emperor of the French was a calculated move, aiming to establish a new dynasty that would turn the page on the revolution and restore France's prominence on the world stage. In the immediate aftermath of Napoleon Bonaparte's coronation as Emperor of the French on December 2, 1804, he undertook significant measures to consolidate his power and reorganize the French state, ensuring the Emperor held supreme authority. This centralization of power was accompanied by a series of reforms aimed at stabilizing and modernizing France. Foremost among these was the introduction of the Napoleonic Code, a comprehensive set of laws that laid the foundation for modern legal systems in many other nations. Napoleon's rule also saw significant advancements in education, infrastructure and administration, propelling France into a period of rapid modernization. The Napoleonic Code, officially known as the Civil Code of the French, promulgated in 1804, transformed French law and governance, embodying the revolution's ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity in a coherent legal framework. It eradicated feudal privileges and affirmed legal equality among men, the sanctity of private property, and the significance of civil rights and obligations across property, contracts, family, and inheritance. Written in clear language, it made the law accessible to all citizens, fostering a stable environment for commerce and encapsulating revolutionary principles in tangible form. This comprehensive code simplified marriage and divorce, standardized inheritance laws for fairer property distribution, and marked a new era in French civil society and governance, realizing the revolution's legal aspirations. These reforms not only solidified his control over France, but also helped spread revolutionary ideals throughout Europe, as Napoleon's armies brought the concepts of legal equality, religious toleration, and merit-based advancement to conquered territories. However, Napoleon's crowning and subsequent expansionist policies also set the stage for the Napoleonic Wars, a series of conflicts that would engulf Europe for over a decade. His ambition to dominate Europe led to widespread resistance, culminating in his eventual downfall. Yet despite this, the political and social changes initiated under his rule would leave an indelible mark on France and the European continent. The legacy of the Napoleonic Code extends far beyond the borders of France, influencing the development of civil law in many parts of the world. Its clear, systematic approach to law and emphasis on written codes as the primary source of legal authority resonated across continents, shaping the legal frameworks of numerous countries. In Europe, the code influenced the legal systems of countries such as Italy, Germany and the Netherlands, serving as a model for the codification of laws and the restructuring of legal practices. Beyond Europe, the Code's principles found fertile ground in Latin America, where newly independent states sought to establish their legal systems away from colonial rule, embracing the Code's emphasis on equality and property rights. Even in regions where the Code was not directly adopted, its impact was felt, inspiring legal reforms and contributing to the evolution of civil law traditions. The Napoleonic Code's emphasis on codification Clarity and accessibility in law has left an indelible mark on the global legal landscape, making it one of the most significant contributions to the modern concept of civil law. 
His coronation also signaled the beginning of the Napoleonic Wars, a series of conflicts that would redraw the map of Europe and cement Napoleon's legacy as one of history's most formidable military leaders and statesmen. His military campaigns, while controversial, revolutionized warfare and altered the geopolitical landscape of Europe. While Napoleon's quest for European dominance through the Napoleonic Wars brought devastation and upheaval, it also led to the spread of revolutionary ideals, challenging the old order and planting the seeds for national self-determination and democratic governance in the years to come. As the 19th century unfolded, Napoleon Bonaparte embarked on a series of ambitious military campaigns aimed at expanding French territory and influence. The Peace of Amiens in 1802, though briefly pausing hostilities with Britain, served as a mere interlude to the relentless pace of conquest. The decisive victory at Austerlitz in 1805, often hailed as Napoleon's masterpiece, shattered the Third Coalition against France and led to the Treaty of Pressburg, which significantly expanded French influence in Central Europe. The Treaty of Tilsit in 1807, following the campaigns against Prussia and Russia, marked the height of Napoleon's power, with France and Russia becoming allies and Prussia losing significant territories. Napoleon's dominion now stretched from the Iberian Peninsula to the steppes of Russia, encompassing much of Western and Central Europe, either directly under French control or through puppet regimes loyal to Napoleon. This period of expansion was not solely marked by conquest. It also involved the strategic reshaping of Europe's political landscape. Through the creation of the Confederation of the Rhine, the dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire, and the installation of family members and loyalists in thrones across Europe, Napoleon sought to consolidate a European order under French dominance. In his quest to solidify the foundations of the Napoleonic Empire, Napoleon Bonaparte undertook a series of sweeping administrative and legal reforms that transformed the governance of Europe. The introduction of efficient tax systems education reforms and public works projects by Napoleon further unified and modernized the empire. These reforms not only strengthened Napoleon's grip on power, but also left a lasting legacy on the administrative practices of Europe, many of which persist in modern forms today. The peak of Napoleon's power was followed by a series of pivotal events that marked the beginning of the empire's decline. The Peninsula War, 1808-1814, triggered by the resistance to French rule in Spain and Portugal, became a protracted conflict that drained French resources and eroded the empire's southern flank. The introduction of guerrilla warfare tactics by the Spanish rebels posed a new kind of challenge to Napoleon's conventional military strategies. Perhaps the most catastrophic blow to Napoleon's ambitions was the invasion of Russia in 1812. The campaign designed to enforce the continental system against the British, saw Napoleon's Grande Armée, a formidable force assembled for the invasion of Russia, suffer catastrophic losses. The harsh winter, logistical challenges, and the Russians' scorched earth tactics led to the decimation of this once mighty army. The coalition forces, buoyed by Napoleon's weakening grip, united in opposition, leading to the decisive Battle of Leipzig in 1813. This defeat, coupled with growing discontent within France and the resurgence of monarchical and nationalist sentiments across Europe, signaled the irreversible decline of Napoleonic power. In 1814, after a series of defeats and the invasion of France by coalition forces, Napoleon was forced to abdicate and was exiled to Elba, marking the end of the Napoleonic Empire. Though he would briefly return to power during the Hundred Days, his final defeat at Waterloo in 1815 sealed the fate of his imperial ambitions. Today, the legacy of Napoleon's Egyptian expedition continues to inspire researchers, historians and explorers. Its contributions to science and archaeology underscore the profound ways in which a quest for empire can expand the horizons of human knowledge. This endeavor not only united curiosity and ambition, but also deepened our connection to our shared history if you're captivated by tales of exploration and discovery, show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. Join our community keen on unraveling history's complexities. Your support helps us delve deeper into the past, sharing stories that illuminate the complexities of human endeavors. Stay tuned for our next video, exploring Napoleon's downfall 
and the epic battles leading to his first exile, pivotal moments that shaped his legacy. Until next time, see you in our upcoming video.